Thank you very much. And uh, again, I'm a hepatologist, not a radiologist. And we, I wanted to thank Supersonic for allowing me to speak and share our experience. We, we purchased a device about three or four years ago. Uh, we've, I've done around 1,200 elastographies in our patients, and we do, we do about four, four uh, per day in our clinic. I primarily work at a transplant center, and we have uh, 14 full-time hepatologists that just do liver disease, so we see a lot of patients and have around 47 patients in the hospital at any one time just with liver disease. I think as you've heard some tonight, uh, the new therapies are really driving how we're using this technology. And uh, just a few seconds on hepatitis C, uh, you've heard some about it. It infects about 2% of the U.S. population. Um, and in my world, about 20% of patients will go on to get cirrhosis uh, once they become infected. Um, and the infections, once acquired, uh, are long-term in about 70 80% of the patients. So it's a leading cause for liver transplantation and will be probably for the next eight to 10 years, even though we have new therapies that are available. So this is the predominant disease we see in our practice, in, which is mainly pre and post liver transplant patients. Now, the thing that's changed how we stage patients and how we evaluate them are new therapies. I'm old enough now that I started in 1991, and we used to argue whether to treat patients back when cure rates were more like five to 10%. And now with new agents that became available widespread about three weeks ago in the United States, the cure rates are approaching 100%, as I'll show you. And therefore, we need to treat more patients. Um, and this is different than what we used to do even two and three years ago. And this, this breakthrough in therapy for hepatitis C is the single biggest clinical development in my career for any disease uh, because it's, we're allowing now cure rates over 90% in the most common illness that we see. And we want to apply this therapy uh, more and more to patients, and we need to stage them appropriately to determine the type of treatment they need. So we're doing fewer and fewer liver biopsies. I do all my own liver biopsies. I've done around 4,000. Um, but we've cut that down probably by 80% in our practice simply by the use of our elastography. This is the new therapy. Uh, it's called Harvoni. It's made by Gilead. It costs $94,000. and that's either cheap or expensive depending on your perspective. But what I would point out here is that the degree of fibrosis, i.e. cirrhosis, uh, determines the duration of therapy. If a patient has been treated before, not responded to therapy, and they have evidence of cirrhosis, they need not 94,000, but they need $188,000 worth of therapy. So the distinction between the degree of fibrosis a patient has becomes very, very important. And we're doing this now with elastography instead of biopsies. Um, this is the reason that we're treating patients. I won't dwell on this except to say that with 12 weeks of this therapy, 100% of the patients became virus undetectable on treatment, 100%. That means zero patients were non-responders. And 99% um, uh, uh, developed a cure. Uh, on this therapy. Now these are in studies. I don't think the results will be that good, but that's, uh, in Texas, we'd say that's pretty darn good uh, in terms of a therapy that has virtually no side effects and only requires 84 pills or 12 weeks. So we're trying to apply this therapy more and more. And historically, we used to stage patients with liver biopsies and we would only treat patients who had advanced fibrosis. Uh, and, and we would follow patients who had minimal disease. And the reason we did that was the treatment interferon was worse than the disease in many cases. Uh, and now with new therapies, staging is done non-invasively with elastography. We're going to treat patients with advanced fibrosis. We're going to treat patients with minimal disease because the treatment is so easy and it's so highly effective. Um, the other thing that we need to know is we need to know whether or not a patient has cirrhosis. If you have cirrhosis and you get cured of your liver disease, you're still at risk to get liver cancer. And the risk of that's about 1 to 2 percent each year. So cumulatively over a decade, it would be about 20 percent, even if you've been cured of your hepatitis C. So the extent of fibrosis uh, is important uh, in terms of assessing the risk to develop hepatocellular carcinoma independent of whether they get cured of their hepatitis C. So staging patients is very important. 
So we purchased, I won't tell you how, how we came upon the Supersonic. I've told some of the people in the company. It's interesting. But we purchased our device about three or four years ago. We've been extremely happy with it. And the, the best evidence of that is I work with, in my section, eight other very skeptical uh, colleagues who are highly suspicious of any new technology. Initially, when we bought this machine, they had no interest in it. And now I'm called down to clinic to do these about three or four times a day. And so it's, it's become a, a wide, widely used part of our practice. We're getting referrals from other physicians in town because um, of its uh, now ex wide acceptance in the United States. This has been available outside the United States for probably a decade, and now we're finally catching up with the rest of the world. So again, we do this. It's been FDA approved in the United States for assessment of hepatic fibrosis. There's, the billing is now evolving, and I think uh, the insurance companies now are requiring or wanting elastography to treat patients for hepatitis C and some insurance companies are requiring certain degrees of KPA to justify treatment, their decision, not ours. And so this is going, to, it's becoming more and more used in the United States almost on a week by week basis with the release of this new therapy that I just described just a few weeks ago. Um, this I will skip over except to say we may have a discussion about how important it is to differentiate the various stages of fibrosis. Is it important to differentiate stages of one and two and three and zero and four? In the hepatology world, I think we're interested in whether the patient has advanced fibrosis or cirrhosis in terms of how we treat them. In terms of how we follow patients, we will follow them with regard to improvement. But uh, this, this technology is excellent for telling you who has a normal liver. It's excellent for telling you who has a, uh, cirrhosis. And I, don't, and I think any type of elastography is more variable in the mid-ranges of fibrosis. And we may have a discussion about that afterward to get other people's opinions. Um, this I will skip over. And I want to just show you how we use the device in our practice. So this is a common case, a 52-year-old who's got hypertension. He was diagnosed with hep C by his primary care doctor. His only medical history is hypertension. His liver values, without belaboring those, are relatively routine in that he doesn't have, he's not jaundiced. His bilirubin is normal at 0.9. His AST and ALT are slightly elevated. And he has a viral load of 1 million. And he has a specific genotype, which may not mean much to any of you all. When we see that patient in clinic, we know he has hepatitis C, we know that he needs to be treated, and we know that if we treat him, we have about a 99% chance of curing him. Um, and what we want to know is how much fibrosis he has, and this is his elastography, and the KPA here is a 10. Um, he has fibrosis, he doesn't have cirrhosis. This tells us that if we've cured him, we can release him and not follow him for hepatocellular carcinoma, and it's, we're 99% likely we're going to cure him of his disease with these therapies with just taking 84 pills, and it will cost someone $94,000. And then this patient is cured. His, again, he's the, the gentleman we just discussed, his hepatitis C is undetectable at EOT, which is end of treatment. He's undetectable 12 weeks after the end of treatment, so he's cured of hepatitis C. He may want a repeat elastography to determine if he's been downstaged in his fibrosis, um, and we can measure his labs as well. But this patient's effectively been cured of, of his hepatitis C and probably doesn't need follow-up any further. Now, had he had cirrhosis, uh, we would want to re-elastography him to determine if he was downstaged, because if he has persistent cirrhosis, his risk for hepatocellular carcinoma is very real, and he needs to undergo screening about every six months for that purpose. So I think I wanted to share at least how we use the technology. There's some questions. Uh, we, again, I think it's very useful to have different specialties here uh, to how the technology is viewed. Um, but I, from a clinical hepatology standpoint, I would tell you elastography for us is integral to our practice. It's becoming required by the insurance companies. It's wanted by the practitioners and it's, it's going to replace liver biopsy in probably 80% of our patients uh, because of its ability to distinguish, distinguish advanced fibrosis from normal. So I, with that, I'll probably conclude my comments, and if there's a question session, I'd be happy to entertain those. Thank you very much.